All right then, gang. So I want to talk about one of the more widely used layout features of Materialize right here, and that is the grid system. So the grid system allows us to display content in a grid-like fashion on a website. Now, if you've been designing websites for a while before or used anything like Bootstrap, you're probably familiar with a grid system. Basically, it splits up our content into rows and columns. And this particular grid is 12 columns in width. That means that if we wanted an element to occupy one column, it would take up one column in width of the website. Make sense? So you can see there's 12 columns right here and each one of these corresponds to a different div right here. But if we wanted an element to take up say four columns or six columns, we can do that. If you look down here, we can see that this div right here is 12 columns wide. This one is six columns wide, so it takes up half the screen. And if we scroll down further, you might see different examples. No, nope, we don't, but I'm gonna show you plenty of them. So to start with, we need a class of row surrounding all the elements. This right here, this is a row of elements. And each one of these elements, these divs inside, is specified how many columns in width it's gonna take up right here as a class. Now, every element which takes up some kind of column width inside a row, that has to have a class of col. And then this optional class saying how much it's gonna take up, how much space it's gonna take up. So let's do a few different examples of this. I'm gonna head over to index.js and you can see at the minute we just have a container and we have this H4 seeing grids. So I wanna create a new row. This is always the first step when we're working with a grid. We create a row of content. So to do that, let's do a div with a class of row. Okay then. So then inside this row, say for example, I want four different elements. Well, they're all gonna be divs and they're all gonna take up some space in this row. So they all need to have a class of col. Whenever we take up column width, we have a class of col. Generally, anything directly inside a row has a class of col like this. Now, I'm gonna duplicate this by pressing Alt and Shift and pressing down a couple of times. So we've got four in total. So if we look at this, I'm gonna save it, view it in a browser, at the minute, we don't really see anything. That's because we've not given this any kind of width or space. But if we say over here, first of all, content, and then I'll do the same down below, content, and then the same for these two, content and content. If we save it now and preview it, then we're just gonna see these things right here. So automatically, the default behavior here is that they're taking up the width of the content. All right, so if we type something in, bigger here, like if I did content, content, then save it, automatically it becomes bigger. Now, we don't wanna do that. We want to say how many columns of width we want each one of these to be. So we can say at different screen sizes how big we want those columns to be or how many columns we want a particular element to take up. So the way we do that is we generally start at small screen sizes, working from mobile and up. So say for example, for small screen sizes, I want each one of these divs to take up three columns in width. So that's three, six, nine, 12. That's the full grid. So I can do that by saying S for small screen, then three to say, I want it to take up three columns of width for small screens. So I'll do the same down here, S three, and then the same again, S three, and then finally the same again, S three. So all of these now are gonna take up three columns of width on small screens. Now, if I view this in a browser, we can see down here, three columns of width, which is a quarter, a quarter of 12, right? Because three goes into 12 four times. So they're all taking up three columns right now. And it's not just for small screens, it's also for large screens. No matter what the screen size at the minute is, it's taking up three columns of width. And yeah, it gets bigger, but that's because the screen size gets bigger and the overall grid size gets bigger, but it's still taking up a quarter of the grid, three columns. So when we use something like this, S3, it means for small screen sizes and up. But what if we wanna give something a size for the small screens, and then for a medium size screen or a large size screen, we wanna give them a different width? Well, we can do that as well. What I'm gonna do is grab all this and press Alt-Shift-Down to duplicate it, to create a new row. And then inside this row, what I'll do is say, okay, for small screens, I want this to be six columns 
in width. So if we save this now and view this in a browser, and by the way, they get these styles, this gray background and stuff, because I've just added a bit of padding, background and line height right here and margin between the rows so that you can see these blocks individually. But anyway, we've given each one of these a class of S6, which means for small screen sizes and up, give each one of these divs six columns in width. So the first two go across and they span the whole grid width. Then because there's no room left over, it goes onto the next line, six columns again, six columns again. And it's the same as we get larger, it's always six columns in width. Now, if we wanted for a medium screen and up to have say three columns in width for each one of these, we can say M for medium size, three. M3, M3, and you guessed it, M3. So let's save that and view that in a browser. And so for small screens, it still sits columns in width. As soon as it gets to a medium sized screen here, it goes to three columns in width, all the way up to large screens as well. Okay, so that's why it's good to work from the bottom upwards because it's always S3, meaning three columns for small screens and up until we reach another class where it says M3, which means for medium sized screens and up, give it three columns in width. All right, so what about larger screens as well? Well, let's do that. We're gonna highlight that, press Alt, Shift and Down to duplicate it. And then what I'll do is also add on two more of these. So let me duplicate those as well. And then for small screens, we'll do 12 for here. So I'm gonna Alt, Shift, click all of these. So I can change them all at once and type in 12. So for small screens, each one takes up 12 columns of width. Then for medium sized screens, we'll do the same, Alt, Shift, all of these. And we want it to be, oops, made a mistake there, Alt, Shift. And we want this to be six columns in width. Then when we get to large screens, so L, I want them to be four columns in width. Save that, view it in a browser. So start off small, you can see they have 12 columns of width each, they take up the whole grid width. Then when we get to medium, they take up six columns in width. Then when we get to large, they take up four columns in width, four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12. All right, so this is a nice responsive grid now. And this is how we can display our content or lay our content out on a web page so that on larger screens, they can be next to each other. And for smaller screens, they can stack. All right, so let's do one more example. What I'm gonna do is just duplicate this one more time. And I'm gonna get rid of the last two. I only want four elements this time around. Well, in fact, no, we'll keep those. We'll keep six. Okay, so we'll say 12 for small screens still, six for medium screen still, but then what we'll do is say what we want to do when it reaches extra large screens. So again, I'm gonna space, or rather, first of all, I'll Alt Shift everywhere down here, so we only have to write it out once. Then I'll do space, then Excel for extra large screens, then 12. And so I'm saying when it, not 12 rather, two, that makes more sense. So when it gets to extra large screen sizes, we're just gonna take up two columns in width. So let's save that and view this in a browser, starting off small, getting bigger, which is this one at the bottom, and then bigger again. Then finally, it should snap to two columns in width. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. All right. Uh, I did say that was the last example, but I do wanna do one more. So shift alt down to duplicate that. This time I am just gonna do four elements. And I just wanna show you here that they don't all have to have the same number. So, so far we've been basically giving each one the same width in columns. We don't have to do that. What I'm gonna do is just get rid of a lot of this. So I'm gonna delete all the way down to medium, like so. And then for this one, I'll say, okay, so for medium screens and up, I want this to have eight columns of width. This one right here is gonna have four. So eight and four make 12, that will be one line. And then the one below that is gonna have four. And then the one below that is gonna have eight. So if we save this, preview in a browser, go to small first of all, and we can see them stacked at the bottom. But then when we get to medium sized screens, we can see eight, four, four, eight. And it goes all the way up then to large screens, eight, four, four, eight. All right then my friends, so that is the grid in a nutshell. And we will be using it going forward to display different parts of content on our web page.